Okay, um, where did I leave off? 29. Okay. Okay, by, uh, let's go to, well, 29. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, whereas the Egyptians attempting to do so were drowned. Verse 30. By faith the walls of Jericho fell down after they were encircled for seven days. By faith... The harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she had received the spies with peace. And what shall I? What more shall I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the aliens. Women received their dead raised to life again. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Still others had trial of cruel, uh, of mockings and scourgings, yes, and of chains and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn in two, uh, they were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, and tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. Uh, they wandered in the deserts and mountains, in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, having obtained a, a good testimony through faith, did not receive the promise, God having provided something better for us, that they uh, should not be made perfect apart from us. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. So, so by faith... By faith, so many different things happened. How, do, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so, so by faith, the walls of Jericho came down after they encircled for seven days. That's not a great battle plan. You know, I mean, I mean, if you stop and you talk to a general or, you know, an, uh, a uh, military expert to march around the walls of a city for seven days and expose everything that you are and you have and all that to your enemy and then, and then um, blow the trumpets and shout after you've marched seven times the seventh day. It's not a great plan except for one thing. It's what God said. Amen? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so, so uh, Joshua had a word from the Lord. And, and um, David, whenever he came back to Ziklag and the city was burned and, his, and all of their wives and children and everything they had had been taken away. And David's men stoke, uh, spoke of stoning him. And the scripture says David encouraged himself. In the Lord. Amen. And then it says, it says that David sought the Lord. Should I pursue or should I not pursue? I mean, if you stop and you think about it, if your family, your kids, everything you love is taken, is like, should I pursue? Are you kidding? But David sought the Lord. And the Lord spoke to him, and he said, Pursue, and you'll, re you'll surely recover all. And, and they went on, and they recovered all. They got everything back, and um, plus, plus spoil. And so faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. They, they went after them, and they were two days in pursuing them, and, and 200 of the men were so tired by the time they got there, that Moses, or, or David told them, stay with the stuff. And they left all their supplies and all that kind of stuff with them. And the other 400 men went on with David. And, 
and went, and whenever they caught them, a day later, they waged war with them for two days and, and wiped them out. The Lord said, you'll surely, you'll surely recover all, you know. The Lord said, pursue. So, so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so that's where the Lord desires to bring us, where we hear God, where we know we are hearing God, where we're following after what he's calling us to, because unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. You know, unless the Lord keeps the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. And so, so it's where the Lord wants to bring us to, my sheep, hear my voice. My sheep know my voice. Amen? And so, therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, that's what we just experienced in chapter 11, was all these witnesses of faith. They all did mighty things through faith. And he says, we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Lay aside every weight. Amen? Did we talk about this last time? Okay. Weights. Weights. Weights come in all different kinds and forms. And, and if we're going to, to run a race, if we're, going to, if we're going to go compete, you don't go weight yourself down. Maybe in training, you might put weights on just so that whenever, you, whenever you're in the actual uh, competition, you are so much lighter, you feel so much lighter. But he said, you know, you're, you're, in, you're in the real deal, so lay aside every weight. Lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so, and so weights can be, can be in all different kinds of, uh, of forms. And I'm thinking of myself. <laughs> I'm thinking of myself, and I'm thinking of, of something that's become a weight in my life. And it can suck up so much time until... Until, you know, you start to wonder what in the world should I do with this thing because, it's, because it's, it occupies way too much territory. And Jesus said, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light, and you'll find rest for your soul. And so... So he, the Lord wants us to, to uh, slim down, trim down to the place where, where we're not, we don't have on all the extra stuff that you would carry any other time but you're, because you're running a race, and the race isn't a sprint. The race is an endurance run, and the race is the rest of your days. Amen? And, and the race is, is my eye is fixed, my focus is fixed on what I'm going after, and I'm not carrying a bunch of extra garbage that, that uh, um, is keeping me from fulfilling, from seeing and fulfilling what God is calling me to. Amen? This is a place, this is a, um, um, a, a, a walk. This is a, this is a, 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 a run the race. This is a race, yeah, in a life where... You're continually, what you're picking up is you're picking up new stuff inside all the time because you're going from faith to faith and you're going from strength to strength. And, and so we endure things and, and, and get new, new uh, fuel. The scripture says, um, they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Amen. They shall run and not be weary. Who? They that wait on the Lord. And so, and so the Lord's uh, called us to that where we learn to wait on the Lord. Amen? And they'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. And so, and so and because this life, because the stuff in this life that wants to bring you to the place where it's like, oh, what am I going to do? But, but no, no, God's given us his word. And his promise, and Barb was just quoting a verse to me this morning, or tonight, when we were driving in. And she said, I just love that Exodus chapter 33, you know, where Moses, 
where Moses says to the Lord, um, um, you said I found grace in your sight, so, so if I find, found grace in your sight, then, then show me your ways so that I might know you, so that I might find grace in your sight. And, 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 and he's asking, the Moses is asking, Lord, will you go with us? And, and the Lord said, surely my presence will go with you. <laughs> she said, oh, it's so awesome. The presence of God goes with us. Yeah, it is awesome. The presence this is what God's promised us, his presence to go with us. And so, so he said, you're in a race. He said, you know, trim down and lay aside everything that becomes weighty in your life. You know, different, different times, different things happen, different things come into our life, and, and they can occupy way too much territory in your heart and in your head. Amen? And he said, lay aside. Lay it aside. Just, you know, okay, put it aside. You know, because, because that thing itself wants to wants you to stop and begin to focus and concentrate on it, but you got a race to run. And he said, and the sin which so easily ensnares you. You know, I, t- I talk, uh, you know, many times about just about uh, ra- wrapping a, st- a string around your finger. One time, and you go like this, you know. And, but you wrap it, and then wrap it twice, you can still do it. Wrap it, 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 wrap it. You ain't doing that. You got to cut it off. And, and the Bible says a man shall be held by the cords of his iniquity. And so, so sin snares us. Sin always has, there's a pleasure. It's, but what sin is, it's the, it's the bait on the hook. Amen? Amen? And so that whenever I take the bait, I get the hook. And when I get the hook, I'm not getting away from the hook easy. And the hook is to lure and to, and to bring me in because the, because the devil has a design and a purpose for my life. But the Lord has a design and a purpose for my life. And the Lord, and the Lord um, um, shows me on purpose, you know, how to, how, to, how to war, how to run, how to fight so that I win. So he said, lay aside the weights and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And he said, and, and run with endurance the race that is set before you. You have a race set before you. Amen? You have, you have, um, you have a, a um, track you're to run on. Amen? The, the Lord gave to um, Samuel. Samuel went in a... Um, what did they call him? He went, in a, he went in a circuit. Samuel preached in a circuit. And he went to all the different cities of Israel, and Ramah was his home, and every year he went in a circuit, and he judged all the cities of Israel. And, and, uh, and, and I felt like the Lord let me know that years ago. You know, whenever he opened up the prisons for me, I was I'm in a circuit, and that's my job. Just go in there and just go and preach in all the different prisons, and then you know next week start up and start and go again. But each one of us has a place where the Lord has equipped us, gifted us, and that's the track you run on. Amen. And so, and He says, you know, uh, as we're going through stuff, um, and we're being whom He calls, He qualifies. As you're being qualified by God for the tasks that he has for you. Discouragement wants to set in. Um, uh, um, Discouragement to the point of throwing, throwing the towel in, you know, of thinking I'm the only one that this has happened to and, and all those different kinds of things, but you're not the only one. You know, uh, whom he, whom the Lord calls, he qualifies. And if you look in the Bible, you'll see men that God has qualified. And whenever the Lord puts you into qualification, um, you are in a place where you begin to endure things. And, 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 and then after you're qualified, you're there to accomplish a purpose. And if I don't get it right, if I don't see it right, 
I can, I can get bummed out about my place in life. I can get bummed out about my place in life and, and, um, and all kinds of wrong thinking happen. I, I used to watch the boxers. If you ever watched Muhammad Ali, he, he, Ali wanted to win before he ever got in the ring. Amen? That's what the boxers want to do. They want to win before they ever get in the ring. And then if they can intimidate their opponent to where, they're, to where they beat him between their ears, when you get in the ring, it's not, it's, it's not a contest anymore. And that's what the devil wants to do with you. He wants to bring you to the place where you give up before you, before you start or you give up along the way. That's why Paul says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down what's going on between your ears, casting down imaginations and every high thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And so, so if I'm going to run this race with endurance, he said, looking unto Jesus, keep your eyes on Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Paul says, if in this life only we have hope, we are of all men most miserable. In America, you would never know that of Christians. Because in America, Americans think they have done God a great favor, a great service by showing up to church once a week. If they, if they put in, a, if they put in a, a couple of dollars in the offering, you know, that's enough. And, 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 but, but, um, but Americans, by and large, haven't even started. The American gospel is so watered down, it's, 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 it's useless almost. And, um, but he said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, listen, your prize is not now. You, you get stuff along the way as the Lord wills, you know, and, and as you learn to, to grow in God and receive from God, you get stuff along the way. However, your, your prize is not in this life. Your prize is at the end. If in this life only, Paul said, we, um, we have hope. If we only have hope while we're here. Out of all the people on the face of the earth, we're the most miserable, he said. You know, that's, in America, you'd never know that. You'd never know that from, from the church. Because the church is just like, they're just like the rest of the world. You know, they, they uh, live like, drive like, talk like, you know, act like the rest of the world. But, but the church, the church that's in the world, that's not of the world, that is manifesting God in the world, is the church that is experiencing from the world what Jesus experienced from the world. If they love me, they'll love you. If they hated me, they'll hate you. Amen? And so, and so, um, so, so the, so the Lord wants that inside of us and us to, to recognize in what we're going through. One of the things that I, I recognize that made life so stinking miserable for me when I, was, when I was going through an extremely difficult time in my life was I look around and no one else is going through it, you know? I didn't, I didn't see anybody else going through the same kind of stuff I was going through. I saw everybody else going through the motions, going to church, doing all the stuff they were doing. But, but there, I didn't see people denying themselves for the cause of Christ, denying themselves to fulfill the will of God. But if you're, gonna, if you're going to um, fulfill the will of God in your life, there has to come in your life a denial of self in order for you to walk in and experience the fulfillment of, so that you can, who for the prize that was set before him, so that you can get to the prize, amen? And, and, and Paul said, if in this life only we have hope. The prize for Paul wasn't in this life. 
They killed him. They killed the uh, uh, 11 of the apostles. They were, they were uh, martyred. So the prize was not in this life. And so, so he said, look to Jesus. Here comes Jesus, and Jesus comes to do the will of God. You're here to do the will of God. And in Jesus, going to fulfill the will of the Father, he gets into the garden, and, and he's, he wants to do the will of God, and he's praying to do the will of God. But the Bible says he sweat, as it were, great drops of blood. You don't sweat blood unless you're under pressure. And he was under so much pressure because he wanted to step in and do what God was calling him to do, but everything in him said, I don't want to do this. And so he says to the Father, he says, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, let your will be done. He said, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him, what was the joy set before him? It was us. It was us. The joy that set before him was the bride of Christ. It was the family of God for, for years seeing us. Us as Christians walking in and doing the will of God. If I'm living for me, oh, I got a miserable, stinking life. If I'm living for me, you know what I'm living like? It's I'm comparing me to you. I'm comparing me to everybody else. And you have more than me, so I feel, about, I feel bad about me. Amen? And, and, if I'm, and if I look like I'm doing better than you, then I feel good about me. And, 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 and all this bunch of foolishness. He said, looking unto Jesus, listen, strip down for the race and lay aside the sin because you're going after something that is eternal, that counts, and, 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 and go after it like you mean it. But, but you've got to look at an example in, in, in running after the prize that you're going after. The Lord has called us into that place. You know, um, if I'm, a, if I'm a, a Christian, if I'm a Christian, amen, Christ in me is the hope of glory. And, and what does Christ mean? The Messiah, the anointed one. The Lord spoke of, of an anointed one who was to come to save and and the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to heal the brokenhearted, etc., etc. Amen? And so, so, so Christ in you is the hope of glory. And so if Christ in me, if Christ is in me, you know who I'm to be? I, I, I will be, for many people, not the Christ, but a Christ. Amen? They're going to see the Messiah in action in my life. When my first wife gave me a divorce and all that kind of stuff, and my heart was broken, my life was broken, and I was just wondering, what in the world? And I remember going to my mother and sitting with my mother, and just sitting in her presence was so healing and, and strengthened me so much, not just because she was my mother, but, but my dad, my dad chased around with other women. My dad drank like a fish. <clears throat> my dad was, whenever you live in sin, sin will shape you. If you live with Jesus, Jesus inside will shape you. And what he'll shape you into is him. He's the firstborn among many, sin, many brethren. And so he'll shape you into that. You live, after the, you live for the devil, you live for yourself, and you'll, and you'll become like the devil. My mother had five kids, and, and my dad used to beat her up. My dad used to, this was before I was a kid. I saw, I saw, I saw my dad slap my mother one time, and I wanted to, you know, I was, I was a little kid, and my dad was mean. And you didn't, you didn't even, 
you didn't even look like you questioned what he said or else your ears would ring when he slapped your face. And, and, um, and my mother wanted to leave. And, and God spoke to her and told her not to. And she just cried out to God, and God gave her grace. She cried out to God as she was going through, through misery in life, and God gave her grace, and she stayed, and she raised five kids and, uh, uh, as, as a godly woman. And uh, it, was, it was amazing because uh, the family used to always say, she has so much joy, you know. But, you know, that's what you get in God. That's his kingdom on the inside, his righteousness, peace, and joy. But just to go sit in her presence was healing for me. It was strengthening for me because she did it. She did it, and she made it. And that's what God wants to do in us so that we do it. We make it. And, and so, so I, you know, I, I, have to be, I have to be aiming towards the prize who for the joy that was set before him, who for the joy that was set before him, if I'm looking, if I can't drive, uh, I can't drive um, the car very well aiming over the right front fender. I got to aim high on the road. Amen? And so if I'm going to accomplish what God calls me to, I got to be looking down the road at where he's called me to and keep my eyes down the road, going after what he's called me to in spite of what I'm going through right now because I will go through stuff. It's not if, it's I will. Amen? <clears throat> because, he, because it's given to you not only to believe on Jesus but also to suffer for his namesake. Amen? It's a given. And so, so when I'm suffering, I can look at my life and say, whoa, is me, this is horrible, I'm all by myself. No, you're not by yourself. No, you're on the same path that, that those who are faithful to God and go to fulfill what God has called them to will go through in order to get to it, amen? Because, because the Lord is gonna take stuff out of you and put stuff in you to write the message on your heart. And he says, receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your soul, amen? And so, so receive with meekness is me receiving what he's writing on me and meekness is my power under his control. Amen? Me allowing him to do what he wants to do. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Despising, Jesus endured the cross. You will be called on to endure your cross. Amen? <clears throat> to endure it. And it's like, is it over yet? Is it done yet? No, it ain't done yet. No, it's not done till it's done. Amen? And it doesn't pass till it's passed. I don't know when it's going to pass. But the scripture says it came to pass. And to everything, there's a time and a season to every purpose under heaven. And when the purpose of the cross is being worked in you, the purpose of the cross is being worked. Paul said, death works in us, but life works in you. Amen. He said we had the sentence of death in ourselves so that we wouldn't trust in ourselves, but in the living God. Amen. And so, so, um, so he says, who... Um, he and he and Jesus endured the he endured the, the the cross. There is never anything fun about the cross. The cross is only endurance. The the cross was total grief and pain. I I can remember. I can I can remember so many times. I remember sitting down in front of, just sitting at my desk with my Bible. And having the Lord just minister all kinds of grace to me. But I'm just sitting there and, and, and just that verse. And I've heard other people quote the same one to me. Oh, thou afflicted and tossed with a tempest. You know, and just that one where the Lord just, the Lord says, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, how I'm, I'm going to lay your foundations with so, such and such kind of stones and et cetera, et cetera, you know, and all the, the wonderful things that happen. We find comfort in the scriptures. 
Amen? And so, but, but it's enduring. Why was I sitting there? Well, I wasn't out at a ball game someplace or someplace else. I was sitting there because there was, there was no place else to go or to do if I was going to do the will of God. Because if I'm off running, are you hearing me? If I'm, off, if I'm not concentrate, concentrating on fulfilling what God has called me to do, and I'm off playing someplace to, to uh, you know, placate my mind and take the pressure off and all that kind of stuff, you know, I can take the pressure off. You can take the pressure off uh, uh, of where you're at, and, but, but, um, but the Lord, if I'm going to fulfill the will of God, I'm, I, I didn't get into it on my own. You don't get into the place where, you, where the Lord brings you to on your own. It's the Lord who leads you there, and it's the Lord who's going to lead you through it. Am I making sense? Yes. Am I, uh, you know, I, I don't want to give so much. Yeah, this can be so meaty, or, you know, so you know, the, the scripture says, uh, strong meat belongs to those who are full of age. That is, those who by reason of use have had their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Amen? And, and you can give strong meat to babies and, and choke them to death. You don't, you, don't feed them, you don't feed them meat. And so, I'm not trying to give you something, uh, but, but we want to learn. We, we want to learn the ways of God. I had no idea what the ways of God were. Whenever stuff started happening in my life, I, I, I was wondering, what is wrong with me? Why am I going through all this kind of stuff? I, it's not that I'm not seeking God. I'm fasting. I'm praying. I'm reading the Bible. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. And the harder I do it, the worse life gets. You know? Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's just, it's the way of God. Because God wants to, God is doing something. And God wants to have the liberty to do it in us. And he says, pay attention to Jesus. Look to Jesus. He's the author. He's the finisher. He went through it. He endured the cross, despising the shame. They mocked him. They, they put a robe on him, and they put a crown of thorns on his head and jammed it down on his head. And they took a, 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 a reed like, a, like, a, like a, the king has a, a, a scepter, and they cracked him over the head with it. And, and they put a robe over his head, and they mocked him like he was a prophet. And they punched him and said, prophesy, who just hit you? And they did all kinds of things. They stripped him naked and, and hung him, nailed him to a cross, and hung him between heaven and earth. And, and shamed him, but the Bible says he endured the cross, and he despised the shame. So I, I'm not receiving any of this. And, and, uh, and so, uh, wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus... Everything in heaven and earth and under earth should, should uh, bow to the name of Jesus and, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen? And so if I'm, gonna, uh, if I'm going to fulfill what God has called me to, then my love is not in things and this earth, but my love is God. And my desire is walk with God, please God, fulfill the will of God, know the will of God, be in it, and stay in it, and don't get out of it, and don't, and don't go um, uh, do whatever, you know, um, get back in sin and that kind of stuff, so that, so that all of a sudden I'm a mess again and need deliverance myself. If I'm going to be a deliverer for someone else, i got to first be delivered. Amen? And then instructed and taught and grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. For consider him who endured such, oh, wait a minute. And he says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. Jesus could have looked at the shame and felt such shame. You, we have to grow in grace to the point. I, I, I remember when my, I was two years old in the Lord although I'd been raised in church as a, as a young man, as a boy. I was in church, but church wasn't in me. I didn't know God at all. But I got saved when I was 25 years old, 
Two years later, my wife divorced me, and, and, and I was on fire for God. I was reading the Bible. I had learned to fast and pray and give and all the other kind of stuff, and I was on fire for God, and I was witnessing to people on the left and the right, just telling everybody I could and the dog about Jesus. And, and my wife divorced me. And I felt such shame. I felt like, I might, you know, I mean, the Lord has to instruct us in, in how to deal with stuff. But I felt like, what a shame. I'm supposed to be a man of God. I'm supposed to be leading others to Jesus. My home is supposed to be an example. And my home is a mess. And I'm getting a divorce. What kind of a thing is that? And the Lord wants to bring us to the place where, you know, uh, um, in the world, the world is never going to love you for loving God. The world is never going to say, you get them, you know, because, because you're on fire for God. The world will only mock you. And religion will do religious stuff always. Amen? There is one name that is above every name. That's the name of Jesus. Amen? When... When Jesus' brothers came to, to get him, his, his brothers came because they thought, you've lost your mind. And his brothers came, and they were outside, and they said, tell Jesus we want to see him. And so the disciples go, and they tell Jesus. And Jesus said, who is my mother, my sister, my brother? That's something to remember. Jesus said, who is my mother? Who's my sister? Who's my brother? Jesus said, he that does the will of my father, the same as my mother, my sister, my brother. Jesus is the name that's above every name. Amen. Jesus taught us, I, I'm, 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 I'm on a dog leg here, and that's all right. Just take it. Jesus, Jesus taught us to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, say, our father, Amen? I'm not praying to a saint. I'm not praying to Mother Mary. I'm praying to Jesus. Amen or oh me? I'm praying, to Je- I'm, I'm praying to the Father in the name of Jesus. Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive me, you'll have them. And Jesus said, if you ask anything in my name. Amen? And so I'm praying in his name because he instructed me how to pray. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, why, why do I say stuff like that? Because you can get off on, on um, Paul says, give attention to, to instruction. Give, in, give attention to doctrine. doctrine. Doctrine is what we get in the book. Amen? <clears throat> doctrine means teaching. And, and, um, and doctrine isn't what we make up. Doctrine is what the book says. Doctrine is not tradition. You can get tradition, tradition that comes out of your ears. Listen, you, you are not going to, can you, you're not going to help anybody by lighting a candle for them. Well, can, can you, you know, I, I got a, I got a, I got a, um, what's his name? Um, hold on just a second. Malcolm. Malcolm sent me a, a text today and a picture of this little girl and he says she had a seizure and hasn't woke up. Her name is Kagan, my girlfriend Vicky's relative. The, the neurologists are concerned because she hasn't woke up yet. They think she's still having seizures deep in her brain. So we prayed for, him, for her earlier and, and I told her we, we'll pray and we'll continue to pray. I want to pray for her right now. Let's just pray for her. God, we lift Kagan to you, and we just thank you, Lord, for your goodness, and we ask in the mighty name of Jesus that's above every name. It's above seizures. We ask God, deliver that girl in Jesus' name and heal her and, and let them know great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. I can't remember why I went there. Huh? Oh. Light a candle. Jesus said, pray. And he said, and, and the scripture says, the prayer of faith. Find lighting a candle any place in the book. Your, your faith is based on what the word, listen, 
Listen to, listen to this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so if I can find in the word of God, if I can find it in the word, then, and, and, um, and Moses writes and he says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. And so doctrine in the word is not based on, on a thing, but doctrine you'll find here in precept, there in law, there in commandment. You'll find it in different ways in different places. You'll find the same thing taught, Old Testament, New Testament, etc. And so, uh, you, you know, the, the, that, uh, the law was a schoolmaster to bring me to Christ. Amen? And so, so Jesus is walking out. Jesus says, he says, uh, um, Paul writes it, he says, the letter of the law kills, the spirit gives life. Amen? Okay, so, 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 um, so the Lord wants us to learn from his word how we live our life. We based our life what, on what the word of God says because the scripture says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to them that believe. If I don't have the gospel, I don't have the power. Amen. Uh, you know, if, if I don't have the gospel, you know what I have? I have so-and-so said, I have tradition has it, and you'll find, you'll find whole sects of people. I was, I was uh, driving home yesterday, and I heard this lady on the radio that has this program that whenever I get to listen to her, I, I like it. They're, they're sharp. But she had, on this, they had, she had this uh, guy on there who uh, was, he told his story. And, and somehow he got into homosexuality when he was a kid, rejected by his dad, and, 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 and molested and turned to homosexuality whenever he was uh, X number of years old and, and got really involved in it. And then he got saved. And then he got back involved in it. And then the Lord came and saved him out of it and, and saved him wonderfully. And, uh, and, and he wound up... Um, becoming a preacher of the gospel. Married, married this lady and been married 25 or 30 years, whatever, got kids and, and, and powerful. But, he, but they told about the, about the design of the, the homosexual, the, the LGBTQ um, plan for America that they've been pursuing and which, which had to do with what goes on in our politics, what goes on in business, what goes on in all the different major uh, functions in America, all the different parts of society, and, and how they had a plan to take over, and they, and they have effectively, they have effectively. Yeah, it was, who's the guy who owns Amazon? Jeff Bezos? Put $2.6 million into the LGBTQ stuff to see that pass in America, you know, in Washington. He put $2.6 million in, and then, and then the other billionaires followed suit and put money into it. And then so, so they passed the, the, the gay marriage stuff and all that kind of stuff. They had, they, had a per, they had a design, and they went after it. They accomplished it. And the last bastion that they're trying to overtake is the church. And in coming into the church to overtake the church, they have many churches. There's many whole denominations that have fallen to LGBTQ. And you've got LGBTQ pastors, et cetera, et cetera. Whenever Jeff Bezos went down to Texas, they had a LGBTQ pastor there meet him who had a 4,000-member church. And... Um, and, and because he's looking for, he's looking for a place because they're going to bring in 50,000 employees and they're going to put $5 billion into a new place and they're going to pay $25 billion a year or whatever it is in, in, uh, in incomes and, and et cetera, you know, for, for, for all this company. And so they're, they're going with a purpose and they, they, and they want to take it and they want to take it to a certain place. And, and, um, and I, I don't, I don't, I can't remember why, when I, why I went here, but I'm a, I'm a, I'll take it where I want it to go. God, the, all, the, none of this stuff is 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 uh, accidental. None of it's accidental. Whenever when Daniel saw the the Lord showed Daniel the dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, and he saw the head of gold, the shoulders of, of silver, and the the stomach of of brass and legs of, of iron and the feet of iron and clay. And, uh, and then he saw uh, a, a rock without 
hand carved out of the mountain, and it rolled down, and it hit the feet of that, that, um, that, that, that statue. He, the whole thing crumbled, and then the Lord gave the interpretation. And the interpretation was all the different kingdoms, and they all crumbled, and they became like powder and like chaff that the wind drives away. And in those days, the kingdom of God would be established, and it would never end. And so the end of all of it is the kingdom of God established in the earth, but there is a war that won't quit until it happens. And the war is, and, and one of the things that you see in, in, uh, in the end of the book of Daniel, whenever the, there's this big fight, that, that this, this antichrist, he does not have the love of women. In other words, he's a homosexual. The antichrist is. And so, and so, um, and so, our, what we live by is the gospel. The gospel is the power. If I come with I think, I hope, I do whatever, and it's not the gospel, you can't stand on it. You can't stand and win in anything. And I'm talking to you about one vein. I'm not talking to you about all of them. I'm talking about, to you about one vein. The Pope came out and, and said that, that um, gay marriage is okay the Pope. I'm the Lord God and I change not. Okay, so religions are going to change. We're not here to follow a religion. We're here to follow Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name given under heaven among men whereby we must be saved. But at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. And so we're looking to Jesus, we're walking with Jesus, we're learning, we're learning of him, we give ourselves to Jesus, we, and, and, and we learn how to run this race so that we win based on, based on he, he said, go make disciples, and I have to be a disciple to make a disciple. I've got to learn how the thing works in order for me to instruct other people. If I don't know how it works, I don't know how to instruct you. If my mother hadn't have made it, she wouldn't have been any strength to me at all. Amen. And, and, and if I didn't find the same thing in Pastor Adams and his wife, they, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't have been a strength to me. And if I didn't pass through things that I passed through, you wouldn't find strength in me for, to help you in your time of need. Am I making sense? So, Father, thank you. Thank you for your goodness to us. Thank, I thank you, Lord, for, for the gospel and the power in it that's able to save our souls. I ask in Jesus' name, bless your word. Let it bring forth in us the thing that you desire.